Energy demands are growing larger, and rising energy use imperils the planet we will leave to future generations. And that's why the world is now engaged in a peaceful competition to determine the technologies that will power the 21st century. Where we come from the past, everything was in order and everything was in balance. But when we come to the present time, we are feeling that we are losing a lot of things that we once had. From China to India, from Japan to Germany, nations everywhere are racing to develop new ways to produce and use energy. But the development is coming very fast. The solar projects are numerous. But they say that they're following their protocols, they're following their procedures, and to me, they're not doing that. The nation that wins this competition will be the nation that leads the global economy. I'm convinced of that. And I want America to be that nation. It's that simple. You know, if we can stop this whole development happening, I think we can probably be able to save a little bit of what we still have as being Native Americans. And then the energy that we can harness from the wind and the waves and the sun. It is a transformation that will be made as swiftly and as carefully as possible to ensure that we are doing what it takes to grow this economy in the short, medium, and long term. I would say Remember what you wrote in your constitution. I would say remember what you wrote in the laws of the preservation that we are to follow today. I feel that all of those are being overrun by the green energy. And it clearly shows that through that, our entire way of living uh, is being affected. President Barack Obama has advanced more renewable energy projects on public land than any other president. Lands that have been traditionally protected from development are now fair game. Over 245 million acres of public land have been open to development, opening the door to a modern day gold rush by renewable energy speculators and developers. Here in Southern California and Arizona, the development of large-scale wind and solar farms has created a new problem for many that live here. When Obama said go green on energy, then everybody wants their stimulus money to go out there and start developing. The Ocotillo Wind Project is a good example of the fast-track process run awry. Valley, this whole area is just full of cultural materials. They're putting in 112 uh, industrial scale wind turbines uh, as tall as 450 feet, completely surrounding my house. Every window that I look out of my house, I will see wind turbines. The day after Secretary of Interior Ken Salazar signed the record of decision authorizing the go-ahead, the Quachon tribe filed suit in federal court seeking an injunction to halt construction. The injunction was denied, and construction moved forward. There's thousands of years of history in this uh, valley here. This is, this is not just deserted desert. There's a lot of uh, ancestral cultural materials that are out here. Not only the cremation, but we have the shelters, we have trails, we have ceremonial circles. This is a very prestigious land out here. It's just a shame to see them out here just destroying it. Everything that's in this project area are all connected with the power that a person may have at one time uh, put all his energy 
into these rocks. All of our cultural materials that are in the, uh, in the desert right now are being destroyed. I've witnessed uh, agave uh, roasting pits out there completely plowed over the top without any concern it seemed for, for this historic um, uh, cultural resources. What is this here? Uh, about, uh, I don't know, three or four months ago, uh, maybe uh, we were out here and seen this area roped off and uh, as it turns out, uh, we were told that these were uh, agave roasting pits. Uh, you can see the ash here in a couple of areas. If you look closely at the rock, you can see the darkened discoloration where it had been burned by a fire. Further, if you look closely at the surrounding sand, you can see the dark remnants of ash. This is all evidence of an ancient agave roasting pit. You can see where the, the bulldozer tracks where they were in here with their, their equipment. Uh, which tells me they did not do their work, their upfront work to uh, really, uh, you know, learn what was out here. To, to destroy this area and then to keep going, there's, there's other four or five other areas up here that are the same way. Um, and, and just keep going without stopping once they see something like this tells me that not only did they not do their work ahead of time, but while they were doing their work, that the monitoring was not adequate. Here, not only do you see the burned soil and rock from an ancient fire, but you can now see the newly introduced wild mustard plants to the once pristine, untouched desert environment. This is an area where there was no roads at all. Nobody used to ever come out here. Everything that was out here was uh, as it was thousands of years ago. There's, there's a site here, there's a site right in the middle of the road over here. There's a site on the back side of this turbine. This, there's all of these areas that are roped off. There's, there's some cultural uh, um, resource uh, issue involved with it, I believe. So it's just very sad to see this area being destroyed like this. This is, uh, this is the result of thousands of years of uh, of, our, of history, and uh, this history is, is just gonna be gone. You see all around this area, there's roped off areas all over the place. I mean, I don't know how they even got this road in here. You gotta know, you, you gotta know, think that <laughs> if there's that much out there along the sides of the road that at some point in time, they had to go right over the tops of stuff. Um, this one here, um, yeah, there was, I believe the ashes were right over in this area, right through there. The dust has kind of blown them over, but uh, there was surface ash. Um, and right here in the middle of this road right here, you can see where they jogged the road around that roped off area right in the center there. Very interesting stuff there in the middle of that one. Yeah, we can just walk over there. You wanna walk it? Okay. <laughs> What time is it right now? Quarter after. The Kutsans haven't even showed up yet. Do you know what color van they're in? I heard they're in a suburban. Suburban, what color is it? I have no idea. Hauka, Hauka. Hey. Hauka. I seen you last Where? night walking the desert. Well, that was was that before or after I went home. <laughs> I think all of you should know if you know how to sing, you talk about the big horn sheep when it comes out early in the morning. It's called a muff. For that reason, should be protecting that that desert because he lives there. There's also the coyotes who live up there. It's the coyote clans and the coyote mountain. Every creature out there is very important. They're in the songs, they're in the stories. If you know your songs, if you know the meaning of them, it's there and you have to protect them because that's the reminder of why we should take care of this land.
Sir, I was out here one time, and there were so many things that I saw, like uh, pottery shirts. I saw different things that were buried out there, and, and they're going to go over that. They should leave it alone, and it's out there. We've all shared this land a long time ago. The uh, Gutan were here, the Kamiyas were here. We all shared this one area one time. We went in different directions. There's some who went to Baja, they're still out there. And some of us went this way, the Kokopa, for instance. I know the Kokopas are basically the same because I speak Kamiya and some of their dialects are almost the same as ours, the Kamiya. It's basically the same. I used to be able to talk to the Kokopa up there in Kamiya and they understood me. They spoke Kokopa, I understood them. And the Mojave, the same way we can understand them. They're different tribes we can all understand. So we all shared this one area at one time. We supported each other one time. That's what we did. So I think we should, it's time to gather to support, the, to support each other and see that nothing like this happens, you know, that they go into destroying it. And that's, I, I mean, they don't represent our interest, it's their own interest. And as you know, everything that they're doing is going somewhere else. They're, they're, uh, they're using uh, all the areas for a stepping stone to take the power to San Diego or somewhere else and we don't get a damn thing out of it. They just disturb our areas and use it. And Imperial County is saying they can get a lot of employment. That's not so, they're not gonna get that much employment. But they're using all of this and they're doing it. And we're gonna have, we're gonna have to say something about it. And I think some of that way is you're being here, you're walking on it, and you, we must meet someplace to encompass the whole area of Imperial Valley. At least show them what we think and what we feel. But there's such things as this that out in the desert, they're all over. They're all over. Some have been recorded, some are not recorded. So I, I doesn't stop. I mean, there's too much left behind. And I'm glad to hear that Paul bought some singers out here, even the young ones, to sing some songs out here. That's good. We need to continue to do that. So that when the time comes, we say, yes, we are still out there. Not all the time, but special times or when we feel we should be there, we are doing it. And that's for all of us, not just my tribe, but yours. If you want to come out, you could do that. It belongs to all of us. And there's a certain area where they went through and the people living there, <coughs> and they see them. They saw the people living there. You why? You why wo? You why wo? They're living there. Go why nya wo? Go why nya yun? So they are living there. You see, you 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 why you? They're living there. Go why nya yun? You see when he sings it. Go why nya yun? Go why nya yun? I go why nya yun?
we just left the reservation. Uh, we're running all the, uh, all the way to Akatillo. This run that we're doing is uh, very important because there, this symbolizes the, the Kutsan returning back to the uh, Imperial Valley, more or less what they've been through there before. Some of them lived there too. So, and uh, the Kamyas are coming from uh, San Diego area. The other tribes will be meeting there at uh, Akatillo. We just got ready, got ready for a nice good journey on the way over here to uh, our sacred sites and to protect our, our sacred sites, you know, to, and to bring the people back together. This run is very important. It's a very important thing that has happened here for our people today because our people had never done this in over a thousand years. It feels really good. It feels really good to be on this run today. Right now, are the kids that are running, I've uh, been telling them how important this is. It's a historic run. It's very historic. It has never been done in thousands of years that they've never come back to reunite with the Kamiyas. They all lived there at one time. And I hope that uh, when we reach there that they'll also feel the way I do about how important it is that we be out there. We're just there to commemorate the past, the people who are out there now, the, the people who passed away long ago, the cremation sites and all the artifacts and things that are left over there. I think we're just going back there to tell them that we remember we're here to honor you, and that's what we're doing. <laughs> Well, I hope that the next generations to come will, will carry this on for the people so that our sacred sites will always be sacred, so that our sacred sites will always be there for us. What are you going to do here? I'm going to do a 360 view of the project to show the, uh, the wind turbines, uh, how much power they're generating right now. <laughs> Um, I'm going to look at the website to see what the wind speeds are. Current wind speeds. They're showing one mile an hour. Which, <laughs> absolutely nothing. These, the cut in wind speed on these wind turbines is nine miles per hour. That's where they just barely start generating power. At the very low end of the power curve. and. Uh, uh, and to put out full power, they have to be, uh, they need uh, winds uh, at 26 miles per hour. So uh, basically it's once again, we're not generating any power on any of these uh, wind turbines here today. Uh, there's only like four or five months out of the year where the wind actually will blow to w some degree where they will actually be generating power. Um, I predict that eight months out of the year, they will be just as they are sitting there not spinning. For a $600 million project of subsidized with taxpayer money, um, it just doesn't make sense for the project even to be here. And without the taxpayer money, this project would not be here.
You know, the runners have run from reservation to reservation years and years ago to take a message of importance to the people. Today we're doing the same thing. Yesterday was the start of continuing that important message that needs to be told. People from the Kamiyai people came from their reservations. They ran all the way here. The Tsans came from Fort Yuma. They came here, this spot right here, to deliver that message. And we're continuing that this morning as the runners continue to run to the site. That message will be there when we meet the spirits of our ancestors that are still there. We we'll recognize them to say, we know you're here. Even though you've been here thousands of years before us, we are the descendants of all those people that have lived there. All of us here, it's not just one tribe. Many of us, our ancestors lived there one time or another, left a lot mm -hmm. of things out there for us to see, to recognize and to say, this belongs to us, belongs to myself, the young people, those that are yet to be born. That continues. We know that. History is given to us orally, not written. It's written in the stones out there, in the deserts. You see a lot of that. That is our history. We see that, we recognize it, we respect it. And for that, this is what we're doing today, tomorrow, and the next day, and beyond. This is just the beginning. We are united, we're going to continue, and we're going to let the people know out there, we're no longer to, going to keep quiet about what you do to our sites. We say no. The old Kamiya grounds, which is here, where his ancestors came, mine came from here. The pioneer in Yuwai. Yuwai is much. Much of my new who quiet, much of my world, we, the world, the Yuwai. Yuwai, Yuwai. My Yak Huai, Huai Wa. Yak Huai but I eat with you, we can be I see you, Yan Yakanap. to the point to where we're not going to have any more cultural materials out here. We can't be able to bring our kids out here and to show them what was once out here, to educate them. And I feel like BLM has a responsibility to take care of this, the, the properties, the lands here, and it seems like they had not been doing that. So the other thing is, this is public land, previously protected for its cultural resources, significance, uh, visual resources, wildlife. We've got multiple endangered species here. It is sad because a lot of our cultural areas are taken away bit by bit, and it's getting smaller each time. And each time that happens, they're uh, depriving not only us of our rights and culture, but they're also depriving the animals. They're being forced in a different place when they shouldn't be. 
So I think eventually they would upset the entire ecosystem out here in our area. So this is, uh, I believe, a uh, cremation burial site where the dogs, the forensic dogs alerted. And uh, I would just, I guess that that's probably where the dogs alerted, right there where that marker is. Um, So how was it able to, to be put on this spot? Well, unfortunately, uh, the Obama administration and virtually every other elected official <laughs> and government entity is, has taken the stance that this is uh, green energy and that nothing uh, is sacred in comparison to green energy. So forget about you know ancient Indian burial grounds, forget about the big orange sheep, the, the golden eagles, uh, the, the use of finite desert water, it's just, it's just uh, irrational. I would say that this, this is a bad decision to put this project in this area. It's, it, there's so many things wrong with it. Uh, the main problem is, is the, the fact that it's not viable. This project, it, it just doesn't pencil out. This is just a, a project, a wind project without wind, basically. The average wind speeds out here, as noted in the environmental impact uh, study, was uh, 10.7 miles per hour. Um, based on uh, the Department of Interior website, uh, those wind speeds are considered to be poor to marginal. And uh, so uh, this, somehow this project uh, uh, qualified for production tax credits. Um, uh, the public is paying for this, the American taxpayer is paying for this. Um, uh, th this project can't be viable since there's not adequate winds here. And to pay when the wind does blow in a few months uh, out of the year, how is that going to justify spending $600 million of public taxpayer money? Being out here, I feel very sad about what's going on with the project. Not only this area, but it's throughout this whole ancestral territories that we have, even in Blythe area, all that project up there is moving so fast, it's, it's really coming up. There's more projects that's being developed right now. Through the Obama administration's fast track of renewable energy projects, over the past three years, 54 large-scale renewable energy projects have been approved for development on public lands. There's hundreds of projects all over Southern California. Our, uh, our, our public lands are going to be destroyed for future generations. Uh, over wind projects that uh, really uh, so far only produce about 1% of the total electricity used in the United States. Yes, the ridge line in the distance there over one of the turbines is, uh, we call it Big Rock. I forget the Indian name. It's actually a sacred site, ceremonial site. And that whole ridge line is going to be Thule wind turbines if they get their way. Um, and so that's another 200 megawatts of wind turbines. McCain Valley, they changed the land use plan from protected and beautiful to industrial and ugly. This makes me ill because I know what's behind it and I know what's just destroying and it's just, uh, it's a travesty and I wish that our elected officials and the public would wake up and see the damage that's being done to not only public resources but these communities that are impacted and their voices are just being rejected. You could go out in the desert and you could look and you could see what the Native Americans saw. You know, thousands of years ago, it looked just the same. And now look at it. We're disrupting this land and nobody's really looking at it and saying, whoa, let's stop, let's, let's evaluate this. Let's really sit down and look at this. So that we can preserve our rights as a traditional people and enact uh, laws, strong laws, to prevent this from happening. So this is a rude awakening for us.
The Akatillo Wind Energy Project <clears throat> is desecrating public lands in the Akatillo Valley that are sacred to the Kwasan tribe and its members. The Akatillo Valley is within the western corridor of the tribe's traditional territories. The valley is a part of a sacred landscape that qualifies as a traditional cultural property under the National Historic Preservation Act. I am now requesting that the commission declare the area a potential effect as a sanctified cemetery, place of worship, religion or ceremonial site, or as I call it, a sacred site, under section 5097.9 of the California Public Resources Code, and the commission exerts its authority and assume its responsibility as the state trustee agency to protect our sacred lands and sites. The Akatio Valley has long been a unique place of culture and spiritual importance to the Kwasan people. It is important that I convey to you the deep concern that has been expressed to me by tribes in my district, that this project has been fast-tracked at the expense of more of a more thoughtful process. Certainly, in light of recently conducted surveys, which indicated the probable presence of ancient remains, it seems the tribal concerns have, been, have not been adequately addressed. I feel it appropriate to convey the concern expressed to me by local tribes regarding their being inadequately consulted on this project. It is my opinion that the manner in which renewable energy projects have recently been fast-tracked in the region raises legitimate concerns. Hundreds of culturally significant sites and thousands of individual artifacts have been discovered throughout this land. These sites and artifacts tell the story of our people. They belong to our ancestors and should remain in the land. And yet today in 2013, Indian religious freedom is not the same as everyone else. It's a shame. We have to document and document and document to the federal agencies. How is this sacred? How is this used? Nobody asks other religions to document as much as we have to document. Cremation sites have been practiced for thousands and thousands of years. We've been practicing, practice that. While the Quetzal still practiced cremation, we still do it today because we truly believe, we truly know what it means and why we do it. We've heard a lot about cremations. I just want to kind of walk you guys real quick through what has happened on the process when we found a cremation. So on the current project location site, the, the current site as it stands now has five full cremations. Uh, there's also three isolated bone artifacts, that two of which are likely human and one is determined to be human. So three possible isolated bones that could also be considered human. When I was growing up and I was a young man, I even helped, with one of my things that I had to learn was to be out there with the men and help with the cremation, cutting the wood, digging the hole, doing certain things. I was there with the elders. And I even helped, sometimes helped carry the bodies. I did all of that too. And so, when they tell me that some white man went over there and picked it up and touched it, that's wrong. And yet these ancestors in the desert aren't treated the same. They're run over, they're dug up, they're picked up with no regard, no respect. It's a shame. I told them about the Kutsan who still cremate and the Kokobas, and they, if you ever need anything um, to know, or you want to do something like that, called them, but they never called and said, hey, uh, some of you people who can do the cremation, get over here. They didn't do that. They went and did it themselves. They touched it. I don't think they'd like it if I went to their cemeteries and start touching their bones. And we were very quickly realized that mitigation of this project is not feasible, that the total in avoidance of this project site is the only option because the entire site is one contiguous burial ceremonial ground concentrated with artifacts, burial, <clears throat> burial items, and trails, because the Kumeyaay, the Kokopa, and the Quechan peoples have occupied and utilized this area for over 10,000 years. 
The damage to this sacred area is also a violation of the California state law, and this commission must act to stop it. Therefore, Jay has respectful, respectfully requests that the Native American Heritage Commission exercise its authority under the Public Resources Code to preserve this area of tremendous religious and cultural significance, not only to the Kumeyaay people, but other tribes of, San of Southern California. There's been a motion by Commissioner Sherman to recognize the area as a sacred sites area, is that correct? Yes. And that was seconded by Commissioner Pagaling. Good job. <laughs> Any other discussion on that item? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero zero. that motion passes. I think there has to be that, that's what's lacking here is that mutual respect of the traditional aspects versus just meeting that letter of the law and the mitigation process that you're following. I would encourage you, whether on this project or other projects, that whatever you get carried into, start working on that mutual respect and understanding. Because at the end of the day, it's not just bone fragments, it's not just cremation. Those are people. And they're, they're associated with other things in the ground that we can't see. Right? We're not going to go and, and dig up everything to try to find out what's in there, but we do know that when things expose themselves, we have the, the, the responsibility to get those ancestors back in the ground in a dignified manner. And it's really sad for me to, 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 to be here right now. Why it couldn't be put somewhere else further away from us? This is why we're concerned, is because it's right here. Our, our, our cemetery sites, our people that once lived here, the villages, the pottery shards you see, are all evidence that we were here. It's hard to believe that they're gonna go forward after seeing stuff like this, uh, you know, burial sites and, and uh, these uh, Native American uh, cultural sites like this being uh, just destroyed forever lost. And our trail now is being destroyed. The spirit of the land is no longer going to be what we, we want it to be. And so I'm very concerned. The trails that we walk on, the spiritual being still exists on that. Only a man can destroy these things, and that's exactly what's happening here. And it should have never happened. 